The CBS3 Pet Project with animal advocate Carol Erickson and the PSPCA. You know, Carol, I always say you're my favorite guest, but I think Marvin is taking just took the cake this well, morning. Look he, at him. Well, Paul's he did. Cross, Once smile. again, he's you know he's very polite. This is uh, <laughs> this is the dog that I adopted. I bring him on every so often when the Pennsylvania SPCA is too busy to bring an animal here because they've got plenty at the shelter. And we'll be talking about those. But Marvin, I adopted from there. And you know today, Jan, I don't have one of these. These belong to Debbie, the, our floor manager, and I may take off with them. But the. I had I never put them on. You literally can't see a thing it's out of blackout. them. Blackout. All right, and we want to talk about pets and the solar eclipse. So maybe we can get a shot of Marvin with the glasses on. Now you can see that there's absolutely no way. I mean, he might keep them on, but they're so hard to get, <laughs> and nobody nobody seems to be able to find these right now. Um, and I think just the kind of takeaway about tomorrow, because a lot of people want to know, oh, what, you know, we can't look at the sun. What's the problem for our pets? If you've got animals, you know they are not spending their time looking up at the sun. No. So they're probably they're smart. Yes, according to NASA and vets and that sort of thing, they're not going to be spending time watching the moon go across the sun as we're seeing right here in this video. They're going to be on the ground doing their normal thing. Now that that said, some animals can exhibit, especially in the area where they've got the total eclipse. We're only getting the partial eclipse here, but in the areas of the total eclipse, some animals, uh, as that sky darkens, the cattle may go, okay, wow, it's, and nighttime came early and they may decide to head back to the barn. You can hear insects and frogs chirping as they do during the dusk. Birds can be fooled by all of this, but our pets, not so much. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it's so rare that we've had any kind of an eclipse and that sort of thing, but there doesn't seem to be any kind of uh, history of pet blindness does not, again, underscore, does not seem to be any kind of history of pet blindness when we have had these eclipses. 99 years ago, the last total one. We had a, a partial one about 38 years ago or, or ones at least that could be visible in the United States. And so that doesn't seem to be the issue with them. Uh, according to a lot, Marvin, aren't you darling? Uh, according to uh, a lot of the vets, the real issue with pets and this eclipse is taking them to the event. Not that they're going to be doing what we're going to be tempted to do, which is look up. They're going to be focusing on the ground. They're going to be focusing more on your behavior. So if you're screaming and yelling and jumping around, that doesn't mean they're going to be looking up at the eclipse. They're going to be just getting a little more agitated. And the advice is to pretty much keep the animals away from these large crowds because people are going to, as you might expect, get very excited when they see that eclipse start. Now, it starts about 121 in our area, partial eclipse. I'm going to try these glasses on. Debbie, you're, you're going <laughs> to just love that Marvin has had these glasses on. But, you know, you can imagine. I mean, they have not made any special ones for the pets that I'm aware of. And <laughs> trying to keep them on anybody would be absolutely ridiculous. So I think, I think the takeaway is that... If you're going to be out walking your dog and you don't have these glasses, it's not that the dog is going to look up, it's that you might look up <laughs> and you are unprotected. So this maybe is a human issue. It's a human issue. So maybe during that time frame of that partial eclipse, <laughs> you you keep for that two timer, um, <laughs> you make sure that you take uh, your precautions with your eyes. Your pets are uh, certainly wise enough that they're not going to be looking up at it, though you may be finding a little bit of odd behavior. Let me talk to you about a couple of dogs. Great, great dog here. This is Cooper, a nine month old hound mixed puppy, came to the Pennsylvania SPCA as a stray. Do you love that little tail? He's friendly, exuberant, social. He needs, of course, he's a puppy. He needs Needs to like, hey, this is these are the rules of the road. But Cooper is a great little dog. And then Cotter is a young adult Labrador retriever mix. He's a bit shy, but he is also wonderful. And if you've got a, a great home with some nice, responsible teenagers, bring him in. October is a male one-year-old domestic short-haired cat. He's lived in a home most of his life. He was recently returned. The owners could not care for him. And Catty is a seven-year-old domestic short-haired cat who recently no. returned to the shelter in search of a wonderful family to call her home. And apparently, I'm going to be adopting another dog because Jan, mm -hmm. I see that my dog Marvin has moved over to the other side of the couch. See who he's sitting closer I, to. I, I, mean, I am. I'll have to have a discussion. I can see why you took him off <laughs> right away. To adopt any pet like Marvin, visit the PSPCA Erie Avenue headquarters 10 to 5 on the weekends, and of course 1 to 8 during the work week.